I'm glad it's a Christian audience mm -hmm. uh, because uh, a lot of people, in, in fact, the news of these things is actually drifting out. There are five of them, and they're actually, uh, you know, it's getting out into the public. Mm -hmm. and, but they, uh, it, it's so strange, you know, given our what we're raised with and uh, physics and astrophysics and so forth. And when you find something that does not follow the laws, any known laws that we can observe, and you don't really want to see these things are under uh, intelligent control, but what else do you say? Because they came into our solar system and effectively stopped. And by the way, when when, when they did this, that's when the sun started doing a lot of uh, different things. Uh, all the planets began to respond. Uh, and it's just that they're taking their toll. And, and Earth is, and we're feeling the effects of what's going on in other planets also, like Neptune, mm -hmm. like uh, Saturn. Um, Mars is also um, experiencing these, these rages of storms and so forth. So it's not just Earth, it's the entire solar system. Right. I was getting ready to ask you how we're feeling those effects, but it's by these storms you're talking? Yeah, the, these storms are solar system-wide. Mm -hmm. they're, they're solar system-wide, and they're working their way inwardly. Here's the deal, the, 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 uh, the dangerous effects or the effects are observing in the outer atmosphere or in the outer solar system, uh, near Neptune and those planets, they haven't reached us yet. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine the weather's bad now, but what happens when the effects actually reach us? And, th and that's, um, you know, Navy research labs and the Army laboratories and the uh, um, Air Force Command and a, and a host of, of uh, government entities are now nervous about these things. Mm -hmm. So are they traveling together? No, they're spread out, but they, it, it would appear they all took position, um, and they just stopped. They really, they've been sitting there for, the, what, the last uh, two years, last two years. Really? They just stopped. Wow, huh, for the last two years they've been sitting there. Yes. So, Pastor has a question here, will they hit the Earth, but if they've just stopped and they, and they don't have a known pattern, I guess there's no way to know that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely, it, it's, uh, no, there's no known pattern, but there is a bigger object uh, that is following physics, uh, and it, it brought with it clusters of other objects coming into our solar system, um, so we'll likely feel the effects of those. Uh, I, I have the feeling that uh, their effects and, and these things will be visible. Uh, sooner than later. Uh -huh. Yeah, but like you said, thank God we have a Christian audience here because we know um, no matter what might come our way, where where our peace and where our protection lies, and that's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, I certainly don't walk around with fear or anything else, and and uh, I know a lot of people do because they don't understand. God's architecture, mm -hmm. but he has really just set everything up according to his own architecture, and, uh, you know, it's in the word, if we hunt enough, it's in the word, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, I, I think the, it's going to be an important topic when they're actually visible. Now please listen again carefully to what he says here. So are they traveling together? No, they're spread out, but they, it, it would appear they all took position, um, and they just stopped. They really, they've been sitting there for the, what, the last uh, two years? Last two years. Really? They just stopped. Huh, for the last two years they've been sitting there? Yes. So, Pastor has a question here, will they hit the earth, but if they've just stopped and they, and they don't have a known pattern, I guess there's no way to know that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely, it, it's, uh, no, there's no known pattern, but there is a bigger object uh, that is following physics. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it brought with it clusters of other objects coming into our solar system. Um, so we'll likely feel the effects of those. So did you hear what this man just said? 
He said that five objects entered our solar system two years ago, and then they just stopped. Let me say that again. Five objects entered our solar system about two years ago, and then they just stopped. According to the prophecies in the scripture, the desolation event was scheduled to take place on May 2, 2013, almost two years ago. I believe that one or more of these objects was sent by God into our solar system to cause the desolation event, but then God delayed his judgment against the world after the 40-day probationary period that started on March 22, 2013, when the abomination was set up and then ended on May 1, 2013. Is that not incredible? We have just received confirmation from a high-level insider who was a Christian and worked at the Department of Defense and has access to some of the top government officials that something entered our solar system about two years ago, but then these five objects just stopped and are not acting according to any known laws of physics. They just stopped. This is absolute confirmation from the Lord that the judgment was to have taken place almost two years ago, but has been delayed. But then he goes on to say that there's another large body that's acting according to the laws of physics that is coming and bringing debris with it that will affect the earth in the near future. There are five of them, and they're actually, uh, you know, it's getting out into the public. And, but they, uh, it, it's so strange, you know, given our, what we're raised with and, uh, physics and astrophysics and so forth, and when you find something that does not follow the laws, any known laws that we can observe. And you don't really want to see these things are under uh, intelligent control, but what else do you say? Because they came into our solar system and effectively stopped. I'd also like to talk a little bit about this card from the Illuminati game. This card is called Seize the Time. It looks like a huge asteroid hitting the Earth. I believe this card gives us the date of this event. Look at the nine on the clock, written in Roman numerals. Then we have a sword that is slanted, like the slash mark you would write on a date. Then if you add up the three numbers to the right of the sword, you come to a total of 24. So you have nine slash 24, or September 24th, hidden right on this card that seems to show an asteroid hitting the Earth. Right next to the date, you have a hand pointing to the asteroid, as if to say, on September 24th, this event will happen. Also, please look at this Illuminati card of the Nobel Peace Prize. The final seven years began when Mr. Obama was chosen as the Nobel Peace Prize winner on the seventh day of Tabernacles in 2009, and then he was given the award just a few hours before the start of Kislev 24 in Norway, right after a large spiral appeared in the sky the night before. The two dates mentioned in Haggai 2 about the Lord shaking the heavens and the earth and bringing the desire of all nations to himself are the seventh day of tabernacles and Kislev 24, which is Hanukkah Eve. Someone asked me, why would this card have a white woman? My best guess is that if they put a black man, it would simply be too obvious, so perhaps they chose the exact opposite of a black man, which would be a white woman. They do like to turn things upside down or sometimes do the opposite to try to hide things and not make it too obvious. I also wanted to point out that there was a man who for many years was pointing to March 22, 2013 as the date for the abomination to be set up. His name was Dewey Bruton. I did not know about this man or his teaching until just a few weeks ago, and his calculations are a little off on how he came to March 22, 2013. But one of the things that was interesting was that he pointed out that March 22, 2013 was after the winter and before the Sabbath. March 21st is the end of winter, and March 23rd was a Sabbath. Jesus told us to pray that our flight would not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath. So this was one of the reasons that Mr. Bruton believed that March 22, 2013 would be the date that the abomination took place because it was the first day after winter and the day before the Sabbath. I just find it absolutely amazing that someone came to this date at least eight years before it ever took place. The video I watched a few weeks ago was from 2008, so it was at least eight years ago that the Lord showed him this date. I find it absolutely amazing that the Lord was already showing this man this date of the abomination many years before it ever occurred. I almost forgot. Remember, the magic will only last so long. 
With the last echo of the last bell, at the last stroke of midnight, the spell will be broken, and all will return to what it was before. Midnight. Hmm? Midnight. That's more than enough time. At midnight, the cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. If you look at the Earth's rotation as a clock, then the first day of fall could be at the midnight position of the clock. It's interesting that in the English language, this season is called the fall. The first day of the fall is September 23rd. Now look at these verses talking about standing on this day. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. The Pope is supposed to address a divided House of Congress on September 24th. Could it be that the Lord is showing us that this house will fall on this date? It cannot stand. September 23rd is the first day of the fall. I just want to read also this article um, that just came out on Friday two days ago. Uh, just the first couple of paragraphs. It says, Pope Francis on Friday marked the second anniversary of his surprise election by predicting that he won't be Pope for long and by calling a special jubilee year to focus the church on his top priority while he's still around. Mercy. I have the sensation that my pon pontificate will be brief, four or five years, Francis said in an interview with the Mexican broadcaster Televisa. I don't know, or two or three. Well, two have already passed. Isn't that interesting? He's calling for a jubilee year in 2015, and he's saying his pope, uh, his papacy could last for two to three years, and two have already passed. So that's a quite an interesting uh, statement to make, say, hinting that his his papacy might only last for up to another year or less. What if there was a place, a secret place? where nothing was impossible. No way. A miraculous place where you could actually change the world. things in this movie clips or the the previews the first thing I wanted to show you here was this rampant looting across the East Coast right before this girl is taken in what we would say would be like a rapture event there's these shots on the TV where there's rampant looting going on there's chaos going on and the other thing I noticed was this 923 September 23rd is right there in the preview uh, I encourage you to f go and look at the preview. It's right there, 923, which is uh, interesting. This Tomorrowland movie it reminds me a lot of the Tomorrow World uh, event that's taking place in Atlanta, Georgia in September, in September 25th. So if we look at these pictures here of the event that's coming in Atlanta, uh, we see this key, and the key is uh, important because this is the key to the abyss that's being unlocked and symbolically they just handed over the key at CERN last week. I have some pictures of that happening. A mystery. A secret. A threshold to the future. Where'd you find this? I've, I've never seen anything like this. One man will break the code and open the door and open the door break the code and open the door what is it it's your stargate we've opened a doorway to a world we know nothing about 
this is this is not like other ordinary particles. It it really is is we're reaching into the fabric of the universe at a level we've never done before. This is telling us something. It's a key to the structure of the universe. It could be the the final point in the standard model, but we know at some level we're pretty sure that the standard model is that not the the full picture. So we've kind of completed uh, one part of the story, if you like, and we're, we're on the frontier now. We're on the edge of a new exploration, and this could open up, and this could open up, and this could open up. Uh, maybe we see nothing uh, extraordinary, and we understand that maybe this is the only part of the story that's left, or maybe we open up a whole new realm of discovery. Be proud of these results, and I hope that they open a very a door, and I hope that they open a very a door. Break the code and open the door. No, my mother's amulet is the key that unlocks the door to the demon world. And I hope that they open a very a door toward a very bright uh, future. Thank you. One man will break the code and open the door and open the door. Break the code. Clearly, he's leaving us a code, some way to reach him. Time or date, maybe? September 23rd? September 23rd. I wanted to read a prophecy that was given by a lady from South Africa on September 24th, 2004. Her name was Ethel Lewis. She wrote to me a few days ago and told me that the Lord had given her this prophecy after a 40-day fast, and he was very clear that she had to prophesy this right on September 24th, 2004. That date is exactly 11 years before September 24, 2015. I checked, and in biblical numerology, 11 represents a number for imperfection, disorder, disintegration, disorganization, and chaos. I believe this entire prophecy was meant for all of the nations, so I will read it and only take out the word South Africa. Here is the word of the Lord for his people on September 24th, as was given by him to his servant, Ethel Lewis. Listen to what the Lord is saying to his church. You of whom the people are saying, What good can come from that dark continent? For you, the light of salvation has come. The glory of the Lord has brought light unto you, and his salvation was revealed in you. Though there is darkness over the nations and the earth, the light has come to bring salvation to you. Your Savior has listened to your cry and seen your tears and sorrow. In his wrath he had to punish you, but in his mighty love he takes you back. You will no longer be called abandoned and destroyed city. You will be called perfect city, a city of glitz and glamour. You will no longer be mocked and humiliated. Your suffering is over. You have suffered enough for your sins. I am the Lord your God, and I proclaim victory and salvation over you. I will make you a sign among the nations and the people on the earth. Your light will shine to the ends of the earth. Through you I will gather my people from the ends of the earth. I have scattered you over nations due to my wrath, but I gather you and make you mine again. Out of each country, nation, and language, to the ends of the earth I assemble thee. I will unite Israel and Judah and make them one with me. Do not be afraid, O Zion. Lift up your arms. Lift up those weary hands. I have changed your fate. I change your adversity into prosperity. Like a shepherd I will protect my flock, and I will carry them as lambs against my chest. Kings and people flock to my light and say, Come, come with, come with me to the light. The glorious presence of the Lord is there. Let's go to the powerful presence of the Lord. Righteousness, justice, and truth will prevail in you. Those who rely on their false gods will be punished in my anger against the ungodly. Everyone who has an agreement with injustice, falsehood, and deceit has an agreement with death. But you, my faithful servant, who trusted on me your Lord, I will give you a title of honor. I will give you a crown of glory. The wealth of nations will become part of your possession, and you will be my glory. I bring your sons and daughters from afar. You will stand and watch, and watch and tremble with joy, for I, your God, will do for you. Just stand and look and listen to what I, your Lord, God of Israel, am saying and will do. I will bring to fulfillment every word I say. Just stand and watch what I am going to do. The deaf will hear, the blind will see, the oppressed will be set free, and the dead will hear my voice, rise up and become alive in me. You will be a blessing to the people of the earth. 
When the time was right, I decided to answer my people, and suddenly, in a blink of an eye, I have announced mercy and victory. In thunder, lightning, and hail, and rain, I have announced victory.